Now, one of the things I've wanted to do for a long time is upgrade my home network from gigabit ethernet to two and a half gigabit ethernet. Now the prices of two and a half gigabit ethernet have been coming down significantly. Of course, there's also five gigabit ethernet and 10 gigabit ethernet, but the prices for those tend to be still quite high. Now I thought to myself, I'd love to do that upgrade and document it and tell you guys about my journey. When I've done it, I've done some upgrading. I've learned some lessons along the way. And in these two videos, it's a series of two videos I want to talk about. The first video, this one, is about why. Why would you want to upgrade? Because I'm telling you, for some of you out there, the upgrade is not worth it. It's not going to bring you any kind of benefit. But in some cases, it really can be quite beneficial. So that's what I want to go into in this video. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's get into this. Why would you want to upgrade your network to 2.5 gigabit ethernet? Here is maybe a representation of your network. Yours may be quite different, maybe much simpler. But let's say you've got a, a PC somewhere connected to your network. Maybe you've got some gadgets like a, a Raspberry Pi, laptop, tablet, smartphone, things that connect over Wi-Fi, maybe a smart TV somewhere in a living area and then maybe some network attached storage. Now that could be other things, that could be a Plex server or a Jellyfin server or a Proxmox server, Nextcloud and so on. But you've got some other kind of things connected to your network that are not just devices that you actually browse the web on or whatever like that. Now somewhere in your house there will be a router, router switch modem combination, maybe from your internet service provider. In the simplest situation, maybe it's just one device. It offers Wi-Fi. It connects to the internet through whatever system your internet service provider is giving you. And it's probably got a few ethernet ports on the back of it. So it acts as a switch. So you would wire in maybe say your desktop, your Raspberry Pi, and let's say the network attached storage all to that switch. The uh, laptop, smartphones, tablets, smart TV may all connect over Wi-Fi. And now you have connectivity uh, on your network. Now, in my situation, for example, it's a bit more complicated. There's a separate modem router for the fiber optic. And then there is a, a device that comes from the uh, ISP for Wi-Fi. In fact, because it's only got one plug on the back for ethernet in fact i actually need a separate switch so i end up with three bits of equipment that uh, provide me access to the internet the middle one here provides the wi-fi but because there's only one port as i said for ethernet then i have to have a separate switch so that's connected to that one port and then i have a separate switch here which i connect all my other devices to so you can imagine the uh, desktop goes you know the packets go down the cable to the switch the switch connects to this uh, Wi-Fi access point, which also got uh, a router built into it. Then that goes out through the fiber optic connector and then out onto the internet. That's how it works in my house. Again, it depends on the service provider that you've got and what equipment you've got. But the principle is the same. The computers are wired up to some kind of switch and the Wi-Fi happens through an access point and then there's access to the internet. Now let's talk about numbers and performance. This is of course what we're talking about. Now here I've said that my connection to the internet is 500 megabits per second. In the area that I live in the uh, internet service provider offers 500 megabits per second. It also offers a gigabit. Now in some places you may get two gigabits. I'm using 500 particularly to emphasize a point and that is this. that If I've got a gigabit ethernet from my PC which is very very common on PCs nowadays even going back you know, 10 years or so gigabit Ethernet is, is quite common. Then I've got a gigabit Ethernet switch, which is very cheap, you know, maybe $20, $30 for one of these. And then I've got this gigabit Ethernet connection to this router. OK, but my actual connection to the Internet is only 500 megabits. So it, you have to follow the chain through and find out where your bottleneck is. So no matter how fast this bit of the network is, this is going to be the limiting factor. So when I'm downloading files from the Internet, uh, whatever I'm doing, this is going to be the limiting factor. Not this one, not this one. Now, if you've got two gigabits here, these become the limiting factor. And that's what we're talking about. So I'm deliberately showing here less to so you can understand where the bottleneck is. Now, if I'm using Wi-Fi, for example, on my laptop, I might get, let's say, 500 megabits per second. 
uh, using you know Wi-Fi 6 I'm quite close to the router maybe my smart TV is in a different room quite a bit further away from the router maybe it's only Wi-Fi 4 whatever I'm getting a lower speed so in this case you can see that the laptop is actually going to use the same as the internet if this was one gigabit or two gigabits then the laptop is going to be limited because of the wi-fi connection okay not because of the internet connection so again the smart tv is limited because of the wi-fi connection so you always need to trace the route to find out where the bottleneck is where is the lowest performance now if i'm accessing my network attached storage just internally then i go from my pc all the way across to my network attached storage or to my next cloud server or to my proxmox server whatever it is and here you can see i'm staying purely on gigabit ethernet okay it doesn't go down out to the internet here so this is going to be this is the maximum speed and so this speed is limited theoretically by the speed of the network of course the speed of this server accessing disks is a whole different video the speed that those give you um, nvme drives versus traditional hard drive raid configuration all that stuff I'm not going into that now but from a network point of view you're staying on one gigabit all the way through and as you can see if i copy a file from my network attached storage to my pc it's limited by the speed of the network topping out there 110 megabytes a second so very rough rule of thumb very very rough just divide thousand by 10 gives you 100 okay but if i'm accessing my network attached storage via wi-fi from the laptop then again if my wi-fi is giving me a maximum of 500 megabits a second and i'm copying a file from my network attached storage over onto my laptop this is going to be the limiting factor the wi-fi connection so you always need to work out where the slow point is. what's the weakest link in the chain now to upgrade you're going to need to change some of that network equipment you're going to need a 2.5 gigabit ethernet switch you're going to need 2.5 gigabit Ethernet uh, network cards or adapters on different bits of equipment. And the principles are the same. I could talk about 5 gigabit Ethernet and 10 gigabit Ethernet. 2.5 gigabit Ethernet is now come down to a very low price. I just picked up a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet switch with five ports for under $30. So that's come down in price. 5 gigabit, 10 gigabit are still higher price. And I'll cover all of that in the next video in, a, in the next video after this one this one we're talking about why but let's say i've now added this uh switch that i've bought for my 30 dollars it's giving me 2.5 and i've tested the performance it does actually give me 2.5 so it's not a you know a, a fake one it, it really does give me that so now when i'm connecting to the internet notice what happens here i'm connecting from my pc to my switch at 2.5 megabits and again i've changed something on my pc to do this but i cover that in my next video okay and then the switch can handle that but then down to my router from my isp that's only a gigabit connector okay now you may have more modern equipment that offers you 2.5 gigabits here i don't so already i've gone down from two and a half to one and then when i go out onto the internet using my example internet connection here then i've gone down to 500 so and even if this was one gigabit or even two gigabit you can see that the connection speed that the pc has in this case it gets limited by this connection the connection from my switch to the uh, equipment from the isp and then maybe slow down even more by the internet itself so in this scenario there's no advantage in me connecting and getting two and a half gigabits here so there's not a why in that scenario in fact it goes downhill the closer i get to the internet and again if i'm using wi-fi to connect via tablet laptop smartphone okay even if i'm getting 500 megabits a second it doesn't go anywhere near this is only about wired connections so this is going to just ignore the fact that i've changed some of my equipment this is still going to stay here and it's limited by the wi-fi and then by my internet connection and again the same the smart tv that i've got out there connecting over wi-fi is not going to make any difference to the fact that i've put in two and a half gigabit uh, switch into my network now, if I'm going over internally, so if I'm going from my desktop PC through my new switch and then over to my network attached storage, assuming this has a 2.5 gigabit uh, Ethernet port on it and assuming that it can deliver the files at that speed. Again, I said about hard disk speeds, it's a different subject, but here I'm remaining on two and a half gigabits. And so now if I copy a file over from my network attached storage, you can see it's double, more than doubled in speed. And now it's being maxed out by the speed of the newer network. Uh, and it, it's saturating the network for that copy. OK, 
Okay, so as I said, in the next video, I'm gonna talk about how you practically do that upgrade, what bits of equipment you need to buy, what you need to change to get that working. Okay, so there you have it. So very, very quickly, if you have a very, very fast ethernet connection, two gigabits, for example, then you are gonna see some benefit by upgrading to 2.5 gigabit ethernet from your devices that are wired, not wireless, uh, wired devices that connect to the internet. Also, if you have internal devices that you talk to uh, across your network, Proxmox, Plex, Jellyfin, a NAS, whatever it is, then you are certainly gonna see some benefits, assuming that the server end can also be upgraded to two and a half uh, gigabits, and that's what I'm gonna talk about in the next video. If you use Wi-Fi a lot, then you're not gonna see any improvement because this is a wired network solution, not a wireless solution. I hope that makes it all clear. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. As I say, the next video is gonna be about how you do it. If you wanna make sure you catch that video, do subscribe to the channel and also activate your notifications. Also, please do check out my Patreon page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.